Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. We're here in the Netherlands in The Hague at the SDN NFV World Congress and I'm talking with Jahan Savi who is SVP Innovation for Future Connectivity Business at Orange. A new job title since we last met, Jihan. Yeah, yeah. So since I'm involved in the business development of this uh, future connectivity, uh, thanks to 5G, SDN NFV and uh, edge computing. Okay, let's get to it then. I want to talk to you to begin with about managing the evolution from NFV through to cloud native, which is very much a uh, mm. focus right now. What does this mean for the ecosystem? For example, will cloud native further open it up to other companies building on the work done by NFV or will it cause integration issues, do you think? So f first, I think it's very important that we pursue the cloud native stage um, because really the on-demand promise for the end customer, and uh, we are talking about B2B or wholesale customers here mainly. Uh, so this on-demand promise will be achieved only if we are in a cloud native environment. So it's really to stick to the promise that will uh, imply going up to the cloud native stage. It means that um, we are able also to obtain this promise from the CSP standpoint to have shorter time to market, so to be more innovative. Uh, so it's quite important both for the customer and for the operator. Uh, but nevertheless, we are far from it. So, so it's very important still to pursue it, but in the meanwhile to be quite pragmatic uh, with the level of maturity of the ecosystem, of the technology, and still to pursue the industrialization of the NFV stage. So that's why we, we still, in, of course, invest in this, uh, and we consider that it's a nice and smart step, uh, not trying to leapfrog to the cloudification, which could be another strategy, but would probably jeopardize short-term business. That makes perfect sense. Thank you. I'd like to talk to you now, secondly, about how NFE and SDN are helping to shape the emergence of the digital service provider, the DSP. There's been a lot of focus in recent months on NFVI and drastically reducing the number of competing architectures and this sort of thing through the CNTT, that's the common NFVI Telco Task Force, as you know. How important is this, do you think? Uh, so first I must emphasize that we've been involved from the beginning and we've been quite pushy in Orange with this initiative to standardize the what we call the Telco Cloud. And I uh, use this label Telco Cloud because I want to emphasize that really it's the target and the state of the art we must come to. Uh, so th that's the first point. And the second point that, by the way, links with the, your digital uh, service provider label uh, is to try to standardize also the APIs. Right. And, uh, there has been a quite uh, interesting focus by the MEF this morning. We are also involved in that. Uh, to leverage on this API standardization is critical. So why is it so? It's because to have an end-to-end -end promise to a customer, to have a seamless service, and especially a digital on-demand service that we are able to provide to one of our customers, it implies interoperability. So interoperability not only between telcos, as it used to be, let's say, but also between cloud providers. So we must mix the ecosystems or leverage both ecosystems, the one from the telcos and the one from the uh, cloud providers to be able, from the customer standpoint, to have this end-to-end -end service, either in the domestic market or cross-border, uh, leveraging or aggregating multiple operators, multiple service providers. It's uh, 
this way we will be able to serve the on-demand promise. And what we are convinced about in Orange also is that it will be done if we are combining the technologies and of course the, in the offers or the services coming from the 5G from the on-demand networks and uh, of course with the SDN and FV uh, technology embedded and the edge computing. And so it's obvious when I quote these three technology uh, would they involve. It's a complex proposition though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but I think it's really what will bring value, what will bring added value to our customers and maybe also what could be a differentiation uh, from our standpoint. Thank you. The last question I want to ask you about NFV and the progress to the achievement of NFV. Um, is the reality of NFV today the same as the original vision for it back when the first white paper was presented, do you think? So, obviously and honestly, no. Uh, I think everybody uh, re more or less acknowledged that. Uh, last year I used the wording, uh, we are the fake virtualization stage. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because we pretend we got it, but uh, it's not a reality. I think now we, are, we have made progress, of course, and that's the good news. But there is still uh, some uh, backlash and there is still uh, a, a way a, or maybe a long way to go before we can uh, get to the promise. And once again, the promise from my standpoint is the on-demand or the quality on-demand, meaning I can customize my service, mm -hmm. I can manage it real-time. Uh, the customer can also manage his service by his own. And so this, really, we are far from it with shorter TTMs, shorter time to market. Uh, and that's because we are n still on the middle of the road to the pure cloud model. I think the telcos really and their vendors should uh, s stick to this pure cloud model and uh, believe that it's the only way we can uh, really leverage this promise and uh, make it uh, a reality. Why so do you, sorry to no interrupt no. you, why do you think that it hasn't achieved the potential it should have done by now? Probably because we have underestimated the, the transformation it means both from the operators and from the vendors. Mm. Uh, so it's a huge transformation in terms of skills, in terms of operating model. Uh, and now we enter the phase when we s where we see the life cycle management issues. So it's real complex. It, once again, I think we've uh, underestimated it. Uh, and then basically it's also uh, uh, a few years uh, before an industry is mature enough, has the ability to standardize uh, uh, things and we see for example this initiative with the standardization of the YAS or the standardization of the APIs um, it's it, it takes time uh, but it's a great value for the industry globally so we are a lot to to bet on that and to believe uh, it will uh, it will be a success pretty soon so persevere with what we've got and we'll get there in the end. Yeah, exactly. I think uh, we should not doubt our strategy is the good one. At least in Orange we are convinced. Excellent. Jehan Savi, thank you very much. Thank you.